I read a quote from you, Summer, uh, on another interview, and it said that we have to look past energy efficiency and look at carbon use, carbon footprint of buildings and how, like, like you just described, not just how the building functions and, and hope that it affects the environment less than it currently does, but actually make it better for the environment. And what are some specific ways do you think that homes could actually, or buildings could actually do that? Well, from a, from a, like a straight kind of carbon accounting point of view, um, you know, a lot of the materials, a lot of the natural materials that I've spent a long time working with, it turns out, you know, they, they, there's more atmospheric carbon stored in those materials than was emitted in turning them into a building material. And so, you know, uh, a well-designed straw bale house or hempcrete house or something like that can actually be a net storer of carbon. So there's actually less carbon in the atmosphere when you're done this building than there was when you started. And so, um, you know, there aren't many industries where you can do that, where you can sort of uh, keep doing the business that you're doing of building buildings, but but actually have a positive climate impact instead of a, a negative climate impact. So, you know that that's such a you know exciting possibility, yeah. and it it yeah it it carries with it you know all kinds of I think side ben not side benefits but stacked benefits of yeah. you know like you those, talked about equity and other things yeah like, those natural wider. materials tend to have be non-toxic. They tend to come from local economies. They tend to support local farmers and foresters and, you know, recycling centers and stuff like that. And, and um, you know, they can be put together by people from the community. And, you know, just there's, if we, if we kind of think about it holistically, there's a way to not just like fix the climate by numbers, but to fix the climate by numbers and you know in a in a meaningful way for everybody like the intangible part like yeah that's what you're talking about yeah yeah so um so what do you think the biggest hurdle is to achieve to achieving that that ideal building that actually does good for the environment is it that like straw bale homes or hempcrete homes are heavily reliant on manual labor is it the, the learning curve associated with it? Why do you think we haven't widely adopted that kind of building method yet? I think there's a bunch of reasons. I think none of, none of them are technical. You know, we, in fact, there are some great companies making uh, prefabricated versions of, of all of those things where yeah. they sort of- Like you, you talked know, about the prefabricated straw bill panels. Yeah. 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 So, you know, they're, the companies making those, they're not relying on, you know, an excessive amount of, of you know, uh, intense labor or anything like that. I think mostly, well, I think there's a few things. There hasn't been a compelling reason to make this switch. You know, at best, the these, the, these approaches, say, like prefabricated straw bale panels, are cost competitive. You know, they're, they're basically the same cost as existing approaches to building. So, you're not going to save money by doing it, but you also have to change to your another, supply chains. Yeah. You have to retrain your crew. You have to, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of work involved in, in changing it. Even if it doesn't cost you more, why would you put in the effort when th there's no financial return? I think maybe now the climate is one of those reasons that might, you know, that might help push more people in that direction um and also there, you know, i'm sorry i'm sorry don't mean to interrupt you but okay. um I'm, now that you're talking about this uh it makes me think about carbon credits and i i recently started diving into carbon credits and how it's it's very uh there's a lot of greenwashing going on in that sector mm -hmm. but if we're able to somehow eventually apply that to homes that could be an added incentive to building better homes like if mm -hmm. your home like you say, is actually doing good for the environment and that counts towards certain carbon credits, that's the financial incentive for new homeowners and new builders. Yeah, and I think there is there is interesting stuff going on. Um, there's an American startup called Aureus Earth that's particularly looking at uh, offering carbon credits for carbon stored in buildings and building materials. Uh, Puro Earth is doing something similar in Europe right now. So I think yeah, I think that is that is you know one one 
potential pathway um, to to kind of yeah incentivize if if you're not going to make the building less expensive but but you can earn you know a few thousand dollars per building in in uh, in carbon credits then that that's another motivation I think you know another one of the reasons it, it sounds maybe counterintuitive but but these technologies are actually too simple they're too easy you know by and large when you when people invest a lot of money in a new building product or a new building material they're doing that because they have a patentable idea that you know they can they have intellectual property control over you put in the investment you own that idea for you know however many decades and you you know you then recoup your investment most of the things like you know say a prefab straw bale wall company like there's there's almost nothing there is patent nothing patentable there yeah. it's it's really easy it's really straightforward but but you don't you won't own that technology you know you can't sort of be the one to take it to market and kind of uh, own it or control it and I think you know that's one of the things and there is no like there is no big straw you know corporate <laughs> um, you know driver behind behind those sorts of things either so you know, it's in the in the startup world, it's it's a lot of very, you know, small companies trying to start up trying to do it for all of these great environmental reasons, but there's, you know, they're, they're not um, accessing kind of capital in the way that they could if they had uh, a really great sort of like brand new idea that that was, you know, yeah. somebody could invest in and know that their, their investment is, you know, going to get this return. Yeah. The yeah. shiny new thing. Straw is yeah. not it's not shiny and it's not new. Yeah. It's one of the oldest building materials. So yeah. it's hard to excite people with that idea. 